Hello everyone, it's Richard here. I hope you're having a great start to 2018. For this video, I wanted to go over the last project I did in 2017, in December. So that's the Advent Christmas tree. And just to get it out of the way, this isn't really about Christmas or about the Advent, but more about materials, tricks and tips about 3D printing, use of materials and use of different techniques um, to get this sort of finished result. So stick around, you might learn something. I have a whole load of blog posts on every single day and during December that's what I did. I produced a different one of these models each day on this wonderful Christmas advent print. So we'll dive straight in and if there's anything that's interesting I'm going to put links in the description below to all of the different days so you can see the different materials I use and the different techniques and the tips that I uh, you know give you along the way so you can just jump straight to the ones that are interesting or maybe look at them in the future when you're uh, looking at using that sort of material. Okay so just to, as an, a background overview this uh, advent Christmas tree first uh, came to life in 2012 and the community had lots of fun printing this Christmas tree and it wasn't particularly this one it was by Peter Lepic uh, who originally did the uh, first design and every day posted a different gift that went on the tree which was a lot of fun. Um, since then no one's really done the, the Christmas, Christmas advent again I've thought about it doing it a number of times until this came along and this was by um, Tom Vanderbon and he decided with the South Africa makers team that they were going to produce a new version of the Christmas advent and with his team they decided on all different models that they're going to have for each day of advent so he did the same thing released one every single day in December as the run-up to Christmas and allowed the community to print with them so what I decided to do is use it as a good learning uh, exercise for teaching people a little bit more about 3D printing materials and the different techniques I use to print different models and because some of these are uh, lifelike models uh, they're actual real world objects if you like they have a certain tendency to want to use different types of materials so if I briefly go through each day see what's interesting for you and then you can go and have a look at them on my blog posts okay so first of all the tree itself a lot of the tree parts uh, were at, were available right at the start so you could print those at your leisure and to start with I printed the bottom two sections number one and two in cinnamon um, material because that was a sort of a wood filled type material and the trunk of the tree at the bottom used a, uh, a sort of a woody type material so the first day talks a little bit about printing with the cinnamon uh, filament and a little bit of advice about using wood filled and any types of filled materials Day one is also a little Christmas fire as well, which is quite nice. And that um, is using uh, uh, the, the timber fill is filamentum timber fill cinnamon. And the PLAs that are used for the fire are uh, melon yellow and luminous orange. So they were quite a nice complement uh, to those uh, materials. <clears throat> so day two is a filament spool. Now... This was a nice uh, example of two different materials uh, mixed together. The model itself is, is done in three different parts. So you've got the spool in the middle and that's printed in Colorfab uh, Brass Fill, which is an interesting material to process, print and then polish up. You've got to be a little bit careful with it, it's quite fragile. But once you've got a nice print, you can get a really good shine on it. The outer material I used was um, Form Futura Reform, and this is a, a reformed 100%, uh, up to 100% sort of recycled plastic um, RPLA. So it's a recycled PLA material, uh, and that formed the uh, the actual spool uh, holder. Um, Reform itself is supplied on a nice cardboard spool, which is wonderful, and. Um, nice and sustainable, really easy to use and uh, really my, one of my choice materials uh, for 2018 is a sustainable spool and really good quality recycled materials. Okay so number three was a really interesting day we had a little rubber ducky now every rubber ducky I've ever seen is highly polished and shiny so I wanted to get that look and feel of a shiny rubber duck and we did that by using um, Polysmooth uh, from Polymaker. 
and this is using the polisher process which uses uh, IPA alcohol to actually give the uh, material a nice shiny gloss finished. A little bit in, like the way you would do that with acetone and ABS but we're using PolySmooth here as well. So that was a nice little process just to get a really nice shiny duck. Okay, day four is the one I got a lot of comments on. A lot of people were talking about day four, and that's because I tended to use a, a lot of different colored materials. These are all um, Faberdashery PLAs, wonderful translucent PLAs, and it's a lollipop, and they really do look like wonderful lollipop flavors. Um, I modified the model ever so slightly just so I could get more steps um, for when the color printing process was going. I was switching colors and doing lots of uh, uh, color stacking on top of each other so you end up with a nice model there okay so day five we've got a little robot and our robot here is printed in polyalchemy elixir materials so we've got a little red hat we've got a white elixir beard and a silver elixir body uh, the googly eyes are just added everything looks better with googly eyes so if you get a chance to model a design of something and you can use googly eyes, I would highly recommend it. They look great. Okay, so day six is the Christmas stocking, the little red Christmas stocking. And first of all, the background uh, tree section that was printed in was done in a filamentive uh, recycled RPLA, which um, was the last bit I had of a roll and it looked really nice. I only had two sections, so I could only do day sixes and day seven. Anyway, back to the stocking, that's done in a Nova Strand uh, Chroma Strand Labs Innova 1800 material and this is a really tough material quite easy to print with uh, you've got to be a little bit careful for warping but once you get that under control it's a really nice strong very solid material if you're doing any sort of mechanical parts uh, that need extra strength uh, latches clips brackets all that sort of thing brilliant for that so really good quality material there Okay, day seven was an interesting one. We've got to use some ABS. Now, I'm not a huge fan of ABS, and the rocket was a really tricky one to print. Um, I actually shook, cut the model off um, just above the fins and turned the bottom section upside down, so it was a little bit easier to print. A few people tried printing it with support materials, and that's fine, but the point of the tips and tricks in this day was to actually show an easier way to be able to print certain types of models and geometries. That's using a Perusa research uh, easy ABS as well so that's quite a nice material and it's one of the easier ABS's to use. So day eight is a little BMO robot and he's made up of quite a few different parts. The main body section is made of 3D4 Makers Facilion C8 which is a new type of PLA like material that acts a little bit more like ABS I guess but in the positive ways, not in the negative ways. So it doesn't flow quite the same way as PLA and you end up with a really smooth, really lovely finish. It's got an ever so slight matte finish to it, diffuses the light really well and ends up just looking really nice. It's a great prototype plastic. It feels like a prototype model. So a little BMO turned out really well. Also takes Sharpies really well for coloring. Um, the BMO was, was uh, added extra highlights with color with Sharpie uh, pens. This has also got Pongo Store's uh, translucent PLA for the face. Now I wanted to do that because I actually modified the model and added a small light, LED light, flickering light, to give Bimo a little bit of extra life here. Um, and he turned out really nicely. I was really pleased with this. My kids absolutely loved this model. So that's a really nice one to do on that day. And we go in a few techniques, just a little bit about how we do light piping with um, semi-translucent plastics there, which I'm really excited about to be doing more of. Okay, day nine is a little trumpet, and this was another use of Polymaker PolySmooth, but using the smoothing process to basically get a nice sticky object that you could then cover in glitter. Now, I've done all sorts of different experiments with PolySmooth, um, making it sticky enough to attach uh, all sorts of minerals and glitters and things like that and it really does work. I did actually create a, a crazy glitter applying device that had a fan that could spin glitter around. You just don't need it. You dip this in alcohol, dip your finished part in alcohol, 
get it all nice and sticky and then you just roll it in glitter or just pour the glitter over the top and you can do that with graphite and other things as well any sort of powdered material chalk uh, and you can get a nice finish on the different parts so highly recommend having a look at that day uh, day nine for tips about how to apply coatings over the top of, of sticky objects okay so day 10 is a little manger now this is quite a nice little wood object that uh, was quite tricky to print. I actually printed it upside down. This is a color fab uh, wood fill material, which is a nice light colored wood fill. Um, quite easy to use, quite easy to print, and just a nice, nice material for doing wood type printing. Day 11, the cooking pot, that attracted again a lot of comments, a lot of people asking me about that. And this is because it's using a very interesting material. Um, and this is magnetic iron PLA. So this is <laughs> this is one of my favourite materials to use uh, ever, really, because you can once printed, you can rust it with a. I use a formulation of uh, a little bit of water, some vinegar, uh, salt, and an oxy action, which you'd use in um, washing machines to get your clothes extra clean. It just adds a little bit of extra oxygen um, and gets the cycle going quite quickly. So within a few days, we had a really wonderful rusty finish on that. Uh, the bottom section is also using protopastas. Um, it's protopasta uh, magnetic iron for the top and the middle section. I hollowed it out so I could put some sweets in for my kids. Uh, and the bottom section is also a protopasta, but it's a, their uh, conductive material, which has got a nice sort of sheen to it because of the graphite content in there for the conductive elements so that turned out a really really nice model i'm really proud of the way that came out just really love uh, uh, magnetic iron pla it's really fun to play with day 12 was quite a big one this is our raptor so we've got a little door that opens up on day 12 which we can pull open and inside we have a protopasta um, matte fiber PLA which it produces it's basically a bit like carbon fiber materials it's got a um, a, uh, a filled material inside the, the the plastic which gives it a very soft matte finish uh, it's a cellulose material so it's not abrasive it doesn't hurt your um, uh, your hot ends or your nozzles and I used the green one for that and a little red one for his uh, small hat that goes on top of him. So that was quite an interesting material and depending on the orientation you can get a really nice sort of scaly looking finish on your Raptor there. Day 13 just down the bottom here is a little crate of Christmas beer and that was printed in protopasta cinnamon, pine and glitter flake. And that was quite an interesting one just to use the different materials. They have a wonderful aroma when they're printed. Uh, there's a wonderful story there about um, the way protopasta actually produces uh, their pine um, exclusive filaments so they only release uh, every once a year. Day 14 down the bottom is a generic Lego brick and that's using generic PLA plastic. The blog also sort of goes into what to look for when picking a no brand generic material that uh, you may not know where it's come from or uh, who manufactures it. So a few things just to look out for there. Day 15 is a Christmas severed foot. It's a little pink one down here. Um, that left, led me on a journey to explore filament samples and generally sort of the types of things you can do with a sample batch of filament. Worth having a good read on that one. Day 16 is mistletoe or holly, depending on where you are in the world and what your holly or mistletoe leaves look like. Uh, I think it's supposed to be mistletoe, but I printed it as holly. So we've got green filler flex, flexible material and little red berries on the top there so that's really nice use of filler flex material and some tips and tricks on how to print with filler flex day 17 is our christmas poo emoji and i decided to print it as a unicorn style christmas poo so it's basically lots of multicolored multicolored rainbow and that's using um polyalchemy elixir material so Again, that was sort of following on from what you would do with a sample pack of filaments that um, you may get from a manufacturer. Day 18 up here is a popsicle ice lolly. And what better to use for that than acrylic material, PMMA. 
It's a really difficult material to use, so definitely worth reading the blog post if you're interested in trying to print with acrylic. It's a really challenging material, but produces a lovely um, finish. Day 19 was a little Jeep coming out of the Christmas tree here, and he was quite a complicated print, so it needed to use support material. I actually ended up printing two Jeeps, the little green one that's in there and the purple one here. One was printed with self-support, so this all needed to be picked away afterwards. The other one was printed with um, Polymaker uh, Poly Support material, which was a which is a really nice material that basically peels off. It doesn't um, dissolve, unlike PVA and things like that, but it's a really nice material that allows you to peel away support from um, uh, these sorts of models. Day 20 is our little Benchy, and he's a boat and he wants to float, so I printed him in Colorfab cork material. Again, one of my favourite uh, filled materials, especially wood filled type materials. Uh, so, cork is a really nice material to use. 21 uses Filamentum Flex Fill 98A. So, this is a obscure uh, abstract apple. Let's see if I can get it out without making the tree fall down, uh, which is another flexible material, lots of bending, lots of flex going on, a little bit stiffer than filler flex, uh, but a really nice material to use, a little bit more compatible with extruder types as well. Day 22 is a quite complex snow scene with a little snowman and Christmas tree and a lot of complicated fencing work on the front here. That was quite a challenge to uh, print to get all the detail out and worked absolutely beautifully in uh, Polyalchemy Elixir Natural, which is a beautiful shiny white finish. Uh, I was gonna use a different material there, but my material went bad after a few years of, of use, uh, non-use. 23 is our heart box printed in Tolman tea glass. Again, that got a lot of uh, comments, questions, uh, all sorts of different feedback from the community, which was great because Tolman tea glass is a wonderful material to use. It's a little bit strange. You've got to you've got to put your parameters and settings uh, slightly differently than you would some other types of materials, and it's got a wonderful way of being able to print beautiful glossy shiny finish. So it looks really stunning. Again, on my top uh, ten best materials to use for those types of beautiful stunning. Uh, models that you want to print out and give to people or show. 24 was our last day before Christmas and this is a little Grinch. So this was printed in various different plastics uh, but mainly PLAs uh, from Poly Alchemy and a few other manufacturers as well just to finish off that day. And then our final day is Christmas Day and that's a two-piece part with a star printed in Joseph Perusa's um, uh, glow in the dark material. So this is a wonderful glow in the dark star. It really does glow very, very brightly. Um, and I finished it off. I changed the model ever so slightly by adding uh, open source Harbour logo and the RepRap logo uh, on there. So really sort of finishing off everything about this project uh, as an open source uh, way of teaching people how to use different 3D printing materials. So do check out the blog all the different days. It was all throughout December 2017. I'm sure you'll find something in there uh, that you'll find interesting to use uh, if you're trying to print with any of these materials. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. Do hit subscribe, comment and feedback and do share this post with your friends and family. Thanks ever so much. See you next time. Just one thing quickly to add about uh, the printing process. During the whole of the printing process, uh, I only actually ended up with a small amount of waste. So I kept that all in a little bag and weighed it at the end, 68 grams, which isn't too bad. There's no real major failures, a little bit of support material. Most of it's just brims and removal of, of some parts of, of the support materials on certain objects. We only really had one base failure. Uh, part and a couple of other bits of support material. So 68 grams in this whole uh, uh, model is not too bad because it's quite a large, it's quite a large model, as you can see. It's 
pretty large. Okay, thanks ever so much. Uh, and this is the Advent Christmas tree. So first of all, just to say this isn't really about Christmas or about Advent. It's more about materials, printing techniques, tri tips, trips. <laughs>